All right. Got it. Welcome to the Delvin Cox Experience, the podcast which each week I am on a one-man mission to Unite Our Culture Student Diversity. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and this week I have a special guest. Let him know who you are, brother. Hello, everybody. My name is Matthew Dawson, host of the Dial-Up Movie Club podcast. Thanks for having me on, Delvin. My pleasure, brother. My pleasure. And as always, we like to start the podcast off with the five for five. Five questions, five answers to get the ball rolling. Matthew, are you ready? Whew. I'm ready. I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. Okay. Question number one. What is the best album or song you've listened to this past year? Does not have to be new. Mm. Okay, I kind of got two answers for you. I'm going to shout out my favorite album of all time. I'm a, I'm a rocker, just to full clarification. Okay. Uh, favorite album of all time is Sum 41's album called Chuck. It's a great rock album, uh, very consistent all around. Uh, something from the past year that I've loved is The Offspring's Let the Bad Times Roll. Uh, yeah, pretty sure that's what it's called. Let the Bad Times Roll album, great stuff. Okay. I like those answers. I like those answers. I've heard of both groups. I don't think I've heard any Sum 41. I've heard of some Offsprings. I don't think I've never heard any mm-hmm. Sum 41. That's interesting. Sum 41, it's like a band that you have probably heard on the radio, but you've probably tuned them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Question number two. Sonic or Mario? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, this is, this is, no, it's not tough at all. Sonic the Hedgehog all day, every day. I knew you were going to say I, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's the best. He's the best. And he was completely robbed on the Who Would Win show. I'm still bitter about it. It's been over <laughs> a year and I, I think about it every night. I, I was on the phone with James Gavsey a few days ago and I was telling him, that I, w- I said, man, I want to let you know that your Mario versus Sonic episode, I don't know how many downloads it has, but half of them are mine because <laughs> I listen to it so much. Just like whenever I need to get out some rage, I listen to that episode. Uh, okay. Sonic the Hedgehog, 100%. Great character. Great games. Well, I, ha- I have a, a side question to this, then. Got it. Who has the better cartoon show, Mario or Sonic? Hmm. Because I, I got to go Sonic again, because Mario really only has that one, that 180s cartoon, which I love. Well, it's three, technically. Even though it's the what? same art, st- it's, it's weird. Okay, yeah. they ha- let, me, let, me, let me go down the rabbit hole with it. Yeah, let's they do have, some Mario history. <laughs> okay, there's a Super Mario Super Show, mm-hmm. which was with Captain Lou Albano. Yep. Which had like the, the every, because I used to watch these shows, every Friday, yep. instead of showing... That show, they would show the Legend of Zelda cartoon. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah. That's, that's one of them. Then they had the one that was based off of Mario 3. Mm-hmm. That used to come on, and this is me saying my age again, around the time as Captain in the Game Master. <laughs> and it, it, and yep. it was Mario against the Koopa Kids. Okay. Then they had another spinoff. They had an actual spinoff of that show. That was based off of Super Mario World. Mm. Okay. All yeah, three different I mean, cartoon shows. I guess I, the only one I was aware of out of those three was the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. And I have watched quite a bit of that. And it's it's great to go back to because it is a total trip. Yes, uh, <laughs> it is. Toad's mushroom head is not a head. It is a hat. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a massive beanie. I always thought it was kind of just a tumor growing out of him, but I like the beanie more. Uh, but Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons, you know, it was kind of the same thing. There were like three running simultaneously. There was Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Saturday morning cartoon, yes. uh, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was more aimed at a younger audience, and Sonic Underground, all going on same time. I remember those. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And didn't Jaleel White do the voices for all those show, those shows? Yeah. Like that? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and he was a great Sonic. I love his Sonic. So. Three different Sonic shows going on at the same time, done by the same voice actor. Yeah, and they're all like vastly different. Yes, very different. <laughs> 
yeah and and of course like later on you get sonic x which is more of a young centered anime and then uh sonic boom on cartoon network which is a great show i love that show my son likes that show too (laughs) it's very funny he's my son's a big sonic fan that's how i know a oh, good, good amount good. of lines to Sonic. Like he, he, you got he just, someone to educate you over there. Yes, he just I just got him. Oh, he just bought Sonic Colors. Oh, Switch. nice. I just got that too. That's great. Yeah, definitely. All right. Question number three, Matthew. What's the dumbest thing you ever done as a kid? Mm. See, I knew this question was coming because I listen to your show a lot. And every time this question comes around and the guests really struggle because there's so much. So yes. Or well, they don't thinking. want to say the real thing that they did as dumb as a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or well, they don't want to dox themselves into a hole. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think uh, I think I came up with a happy medium. And back when this was probably around fifth grade, I'm at church, a little uh, youth group event, and there's a game where you start out with game time, of course, and then the game was that you get a bunch of M and M's poured out in front of you. Uh, this is the most Michigan game ever. Uh, and you just sort the M&Ms by color. And whoever does that fastest gets to win or something. Uh, so I very eagerly volunteered the, for this game, not remembering that I am severely colorblind. And <laughs> <laughs> they're all red. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So I go up there, I go up there and I'm standing up there and uh, my mom was like a chaperone and she's just like shaking her head in the background knowing what's about to happen. And I just stand there and all the kids start going and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, they are all red. (laughs) The same M&Ms. So I just start bawling in front of everyone because I I can't do it. (laughs) This, this, that was great. I, can't, I don't even know how to respond after that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that's, man. that's incredible. <laughs> this, this, it, this, it's this. stuck with me. It's one of those experiences that it's one of your core memories, you know? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Question number four. Mm-hmm. Thanos comes to Earth. With the gauntlet, stones, mm-hmm. all that pizzazz, you can pick five heroes from any universe you want to to take out Thanos. Mm-hmm. Who are you picking? All right. So Sonic the Hedgehog is on my team by default. Uh, and, and he's okay. a great resource. I'm not going to underestimate that speed. Uh, and, of course, Samurai Jack is also on my team as default. He's going to kind of be that Captain America type leading us into battle. Okay. Uh, I also, I'm going to take Ghost Rider. I think that's a vastly underestimated character. Oh, yeah. And he's, yeah, he's insanely powerful. Doctor Strange shakes in his boots thinking about Ghost Rider. Yeah, I uh, love Ghost Rider. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's three. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Flash. I value a lot of speed. So Sonic and Flash are going to be that power team. Thanos isn't going to know what hit him. And also, if we start losing, Flash can just go back in time and restart the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh last up, I, I think I gotta take Goku. It's just it's Goku. I don't okay. gotta explain <laughs> it. Yeah, I think you're gonna need all those characters because it's gonna take 30 years for Goku to do a fusion bomb. <laughs> well that, that's what bomb. Sonic and Flash are for. They're gonna <laughs> try to distract him enough. It's gonna take like a whole month. He's just sitting there and just <laughs> gathering up all his spirits. It, yeah, how many seasons is this battle taking place over? <laughs> That's an important question for this. Exactly. All right. Question number five. Mm-hmm. Zombie apocalypse is happening Walking Dead style. You can okay. take five things to go out in the world and survive. Family and pets don't count. They automatically go with you. Unless you don't want them to, then they can die <laughs> for all I care. Because I said this before to people. They're like, I don't want them to come. I'm like, oh, they can die. <laughs> like, I'm not going to make you take them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the five things you take in the world to survive? Anything you want, by the way. Whew. Five things. I'm taking, hmm. You know, I think if a 
Bruce Campbell taught me anything, it's that Chainsaw is going to do great. So I'm taking the Chainsaw. I like that. Because I'm not going to have to worry about ammo. There's going to be, everyone's dead. I can just siphon gas from people's cars into my Chainsaw. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, so we got Chainsaw. I'm going to take, hmm... I think a good a good hammer is going to be nice, not for the zombies, because I'm not going to be stupid with a hammer. I'm going to, it's for smashing windows to get into places like Subway, and boom, I have all the turkey, all the okay. ham, all the spinach, all my nutrients from all the Subway restaurants I'm going to be raiding. Uh, and my, my hedgehog Franklin's got to come with me, so we're taking Franklin's uh, ball. So he can roll around next to me. Okay, it's gonna be kind of like I am Legend okay. with uh, Will Smith and his dog, but it's gonna be me and this hedgehog. Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Is this just curious? Is this the record amount of time someone said hedgehog on your podcast already? Probably because nobody's ever said hedgehog on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I won at number one, baby. Uh, I got two more things. So uh, I think. I think we're going to need some suntan lotion because okay. things are going to get hot. It's very important to take care of your skin. And uh, last but not least, hmm, I feel like after I'm done saying this list, you're going to be like, yeah, you're you're dead already. You wasted it on a ball and suntan <laughs> lotion. <laughs> so, uh, I got to really make up this last one here. I'm going to take, hmm, this is tough. A weapon? Well, I got the chainsaw. Yeah, I should get something short range, or I should get something long range. You're right. Yeah, you're that's right. what I was gonna, thinking. Yeah, like because chainsaw, gonna, you gotta, it's gonna run out of gas. You're gonna need to get gas for it eventually. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna grab. Um, hmm. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do like a a high grade drone. Okay, and, and listen, because I'm gonna that thing's gonna be like basically a small helicopter. I'm okay. gonna grab onto it, and if any zombies are coming at me, I can just fly up. That's okay. going to be so useful, and it's rechargeable. Okay, that's that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I kind of mm -hmm. like that. A drone. Okay, so you can use it to fly away and things like that. Okay, exactly, exactly. Rechargeable. I'm trying to think. I'm assuming solar powered. We're gonna we're gonna for the sake of the argument, yes, we're yeah, gonna go I, solar. I'm trying to think. Are there solar powered drones? There has to be, right? Or something I'm like sure that. there's solar powered chargers, like converters, you know? Yeah, it has that to be something right. like that. Yeah, it has to be something like that. Like that. I would assume yeah. so. I don't know. I don't own yeah. a drone. I don't either. No, no. I way. did own at one point. You ever seen those those air hog oh, ships yeah. and stuff like yep. that? I yep. had one of a TIE fighter. Ooh, that sounds awesome. And it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Remote control airplane fly it all around the park and stuff like that. It was made That's of awesome. like, like a, a phone that wasn't supposed to break, and then my brother in law got it stuck in the tree, and that was the end of that. <laughs> just like yeah, that's the thing destroyed. with those types of toys. They're great for the five minutes they're usable. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Had yep. a blast, but it was like, ah, once it died, like, ah, here we go. It's so, <laughs> yep, short lived. <laughs> so, let everybody know a little bit about yourself for those who don't know. Ooh, all right. Yeah, uh, like I said, my name is Matthew Dawson. I am a young creator looking to elevate all creators. Uh, I'm currently hosting the Dial-Up Movie Club podcast with my two buddies, Drew Barker and Dean Calkins. And this podcast, we uh, get together each week. One of us brings a movie or we have a guest on bringing us a movie. And we are in a search for the best movie ever made. The best of the best. And each month we have a different category. We are in black and white month right now with September. Uh, next month, of course, uh, it's October. It's going to be horror month. And just fans of this show especially, I think you're really going to like horror month. There might be some surprises. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, yes. but I am winking. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I've been, I've been in this type of field, like I've been in love with filmmaking since ninth grade, early high school, and I uh, went into film school for about a year. I did college film school, and I the place I won't name it, but it's a scam. <laughs> 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 I, I don't, uh, 
maybe there are great film schools on there out there, but I found that there was nothing I couldn't teach myself that film school was teaching me. I've been actively pumping out new content for years and every day I learn something new. And I, I just found that's the best way I learn. If, if you like having a book shoved in your face, that's great. But that's, that's not how I learn. I don't think that's the effective way to learn. So, yeah, I'm just a guy out here trying to elevate people around me while also trying to make a name for myself. And I want to show off cool movies and what we can learn from them and from other people. Let, let me ask you about this because you brought up an interesting topic with this. Mm -hmm. It seems like this generation in particular mm -hmm. has it figured out in terms of making content. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Kevin Smith, when he made Clerks, he got a loan out. He put all his money into making Clerks. Like, in all the, th like, everything he went, went through to make that movie become something. Whereas mm -hmm. now, I can literally just use my iPhone and make yeah. Clerks myself. And it probably would honestly look better than it did when yeah. he made it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between back then and now. And like you said, you went to film school and stuff like that. You didn't get what you needed from it. I think a part of that probably plays into that whole thing where we just advanced as a society so mm -hmm. much where you don't necessarily need to have the top of the line stuff to make cool stuff when you have YouTubers doing it themselves and mm -hmm. if you want to learn you can just go on YouTube and look up a video yeah yeah you can learn whatever you need from film school on YouTube for $60,000 cheaper yeah <laughs> and I've crazy. seen people do it like you can go on YouTube and look up what cameras you need to buy how to mm -hmm. light do light things and everything you need to know in half the time and it's Kind of just interesting how that works out now because so many people are content creators. Yeah, yeah. And I was having this conversation of there's a saying that it's a miracle that any movie gets made because of just the work that it takes to make that happen. And I said, that's not true. It's, it's very easy to make a movie. Like you said, you could make one on your phone right now. You could record us talking for however long this goes and put it up on IMDb. That's not a miracle. It's very easy to make a movie. It's very it's a miracle that good movies get made because that yeah. is much harder to do. Yeah, I agree. That's why that's I think what, the Avengers movies are so popular. Or Marvel oh, yeah. MCU in general, because their movies are usually well, I would say always at least good. Yeah, yeah. They, They're very consistent. Yes. And that's not an easy thing to do nowadays. No, no. It, it, and I think what Marvel's done right is that they have this showrunner, this uh, head guy, Kevin Feige, and this guy is passionate about comics. I I talked on an episode a while ago with James Gavsey how people that are making these comic book movies need to be passionate about the characters. And I think that's exactly what Kevin Feige is. I, I love the story of when x-men the original x-men was being made and kevin feige was a producer on that and hugh jackman who played wolverine of course goes into his office and it's just wall-to-wall x-men comics uh wolverine figurines and i'm like yeah that's the guy you want show running your company not yes yeah. not um someone like whoever is running things at dc i don't know <laughs> yeah but obviously they don't care I agree. It's kind of it's kind of hard to look at it like that because well, not look at it like that. It's kind of hard because you see, for so long, and I didn't want to get in this tangent, but we're here now. So long, <laughs> DC has kind of been the top dog in terms of people like Batman. Batman mm -hmm. is probably the most recognizable character in comics history. Batman and Spider Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Batman, but you know, people always ask for in terms of movie wise. Batman, Superman, mostly DC characters. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of flipped. And these characters that, like I knew, because I was a Marvel fan, like Iron Man, Captain America, mm -hmm. Falcon, they're yep. all household names now. And it's yep. because of Kevin Feige's work and kind of letting people find out who these characters are and making people fall in love with them. Like Black Panther. Mm -hmm. The average person 
a few years back wouldn't, wouldn't know who Black Panther was. Wouldn't mm-hmm. know about that. Now everybody knows who Black Panther is. And the chat with Bo, Bozeman is beloved because of that character. Yeah. And I think that's also and, and it's crazy to say that because Chadwick Boseman played like Jackie Robinson. He's played like a lot of famous yeah. characters, but people resonate with him for Black Panther. Mm-hmm. And Black Panther, where I love Black Panther as a comic book, he wasn't necessarily a popular character. I wouldn't think people would put them, the average comic book fan probably wouldn't put Black Panther in their top 10. Maybe not even mm-hmm. their top 20 mm-hmm. a few years back. Now you can easily See, and commonly see people put Black Panther in the top five, top ten in terms of like comic book characters. Yeah, and I think yeah, that definitely that has. I've to do always with Kevin loved Feige. Black Panther. Like my dad, his number one favorite character of all time was Black Panther, and uh, he passed away in 2011. Oh. And so when Black Panther was revealed to be coming in Civil War, my hype was through the roof, and I think. And and that trailer comes out and everyone's talking about Spider Man and I think Spider Man's great but like I'm hyped that Black Panther is in this thing because yeah. I've seen Spider Man you know multiple times yeah <laughs> yeah and give give a character like Black Panther the spotlight and it and it's really a shame to me that sadly we can't get any more of that because I think it's an awesome character to include and I don't know where they're going down the road for the sequel it's happening. But it, it makes me sad that a character like T'Challa won't be in the MCU anymore. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I, I think it's a, it's a little tragic because we don't get mm-hmm. to see that story end. And then, yeah. and I understand why we don't, but it feels like we needed T'Challa. Even though mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm quite sure what they're going to do is fine. I think even if they go with Shiri, it's mm-hmm. fine and it's great. But that Black, that Black Panther movie and Civil War, for that matter, was a moment. Like just mm-hmm. seeing Black Panther be Black Panther on the screen, and he was alongside Captain America, Spider Man, yeah. Iron Man, and hold his own. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That it, yeah. Do you okay? I don't. Maybe this is too soon, but like, do you think they should recast? Because I think it's a super tough question. At first, when it first happened, I said no. Mm-hmm. Now that I think about it, the more I th- the more I get away from the situation, the much as I love chat with, yeah, I think it'll be cool to recast mm-hmm. to let that the Black Panther legacy live on. Not just because, yeah. not just because of the legacy of the character, but so they can properly pass the torch to a Shiri. I think mm-hmm. it's it sucks to chat with going. It hurts. Like I said, I think about it a lot. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think it, that character, Black Panther, is important to people. Yeah. A whole generation of kids love T'Challa, love that mm-hmm. world of Wakanda. And I, I think it's a shame that we won't be able to see what was originally... I, I, said, I said the same thing about Heath Ledger and the Joker. Mm-hmm. It, it's a shame yeah. that we didn't get to see what really would have that ended up being. Yeah. Yep. I think it works better with the joker because heath ledger it sounds like he might have been a small cameo in the dark knight rises yeah but t'challa is this character that we kind of thought was going to headline whatever the next few years of the mcu looks like yeah he he was going to be the anchor it was going to be it was going to be captain america who was falcon and t'challa essentially which is awesome Yeah. yeah that's a great duo and I, I agree with you 100% that, like, at the time of his passing, I was like, no, we are not going to recast him because he was perfect. And now, as time goes on, I, I have the same exact viewpoint, that this is such an important character to so many people. And I think, I, I don't speak for him, obviously, but I think Chad would probably would have wanted T'Challa to go on, you know? Because it is an important character and what he represents and I think it's important for kids to have that. And you could say, well, Matthew, duh, they can just go watch Black Panther. But moving forward and how they're going to handle it, I think is really going to decide the future of the MCU. Yeah. And I, I will go, I'll go a step further. Um, Christopher Reeve is a lot of people's mm-hmm. favorite Superman. Yep. Even after his passing, they didn't tarnish the legacy of Christopher Reeve. All the other Supermen 
have to live up to his legacy. Yeah. Like people, when people think of Superman, they think of Christopher Reeve. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it'll be the same thing with Jadwick. Like when you think of T'Challa and Black Panther, even when if you do eventually, because they, eventually they're gonna recast mm-hmm. T'Challa. Yeah. W- whether it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, there's gonna be another Black Panther movie with T'Challa as the main character. Yeah. Yep. Eventually, because that's just how comics work. You reboot the universe, things like that. Yep. Whoever plays that role is going to always be compared to Chadwick's role because, because it was such a memorable role. Not only in Civil War, but you got Civil War. You got, was it, Infinity War. You got yep. Endgame. You got, a, you, got a, you got a lot of <laughs> Chadwick as Black yeah. Panther, even in What If. Yeah, What If he's in now. Yep. Yeah, he, you got several cool moments as him as Black Panther. So, yeah. And that's going to be like insurmountable pressure for whoever that next actor is. Like you think about even Batman right now when Ben Affleck was cast or Robert Pattinson, all the backlash that came with that. And that's a character that gets rebooted every like five to 10 years. Yeah. And gets compared to the original Batman who is Michael Keaton. So it's even crazy when you think about like that, like people have their favorites and it's crazy. Like anytime you hear a conversation about Batman, they always mm-hmm. say, Michael Keaton. Then after Michael Keaton, who is the best out of these Batman? They, <laughs> yeah, they put yeah. Michael Keaton in the class by himself. And they say, okay, besides Michael Keaton, who is the best Batman? Yeah. yeah. So let, let me ask you this. Yeah. Great idea for your movie podcast and things like that. I like Ooh. the concept of it. But there's right, something else that you do that's really cool. All right. You do like this kind of cool, because you mentioned it multiple times, James Gapsy from the Who's Wood Show, who's mm-hmm. also a regular on the Devil Talk Experience. I can say that. You do this cool thing where you do these trailers for the mm-hmm. Who Will Win matchups. Yes. They're awesome. If you haven't, if one, <laughs> if you haven't watched the Who, listen, listen to the Who Will Win Show, I think it's, I think it's, you can watch it too because it's on YouTube as well. Yep. Yep. A lot of episodes are on YouTube now. So, if you haven't watched or listened to the Who Would Show, what are you doing? You definitely need to check this out. <laughs> it's really cool. It's fictional battles between fictional characters. One-on-one, mono-mono. So what's cool about it is Matthew does these cool trailers for the battles. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're awesome. So I have two questions for you. Awesome. How do you come yep. up with the trailers, for one? And more importantly, and this is one I always wanted, wanted about for myself, Mm-hmm. How do you come up with, because every time he does a trailer, he shows the stats of mm-hmm. the character. How do you come up with the stats for the character? All right. So your first question, uh, how do I kind of put this thing together? I do have a template. Like, of course, it starts to get a little card of what the battle is going to be. And then uh, the stats for each character and then a little edit of like a movie trailer. And then, of course, who's representing who, and then if there's a sponsor at the end. So how this started was I I was a fan of the Who Would Win show starting at, like, the start of season two. I kind of found it. And a few months went by, and I was like, I love this show. Like, I, I think this is an incredible concept, and I love it. So I DM'd James on Twitter. And I said, hey, uh, this show, it needs a video format. Like, it's incredible. I agree. And I would, love to, I would love to edit it for you. And he said, that's awesome. We already got someone on it. And I was like, that's great. That's great. I'll stand back. And then like a couple weeks passed, and I just felt this itch. And I DM'd him again. I'm like, James, I'm annoying you, I'm sure. Uh, but you got to give me a chance trailers like this is going to build up hype for these matchups because every everyone loves trailers we were all crying about the spider-man trailer for months so it's true (laughs) so it's just a layer to build and i sent him a few pitches i did a few of his old battles like i did a captain america versus darth vader trailer sent it over and stuff and he was like awesome we love it we're gonna start this off in season three thing so season three starts I, I i want everyone to know i don't learn the matchups before you guys do we i learned them the same time you do <laughs> so okay. i don't get any spe- special privileges for the fans out there 
but it's revealed it's Ahsoka Tano versus the Dragonborn. I'm like, great. I love both these things. Put a little, put a little edit. And then we did that for a few months, just little edits. And then James and I, we we're in pretty good contact and we're like, okay, we need to like, this is great, but there's still more that can be built on. So we come up with the stats and how I come up with the stats is, basically a lot of research and i do have a little chart i use of like a f a five for speed is supersonic or something and uh and i just kind of go on reddit forums and every website i can find marvel characters are great because they have a whole um uh, wiki which they list the stats out for you yes and i'm like that's great and i just convert them into my own chart so, yeah, and some some are harder than others, especially when Ray gets his way and does the most Ray random thing. characters. <laughs> NFL Super Pro, yes. Yep, I, I think the toughest trailer I've ever made was for the Ninja Turtles versus the Guardians because I couldn't find anything on the Guardians. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and... NFL Super Pro, we weren't doing stats at that point, so I got off the hook really easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so just a lot of research goes into those, a lot of love. I spend a good amount of time on those trailers, and then it's incredibly worth it because I do get all the uh, people coming in the comments saying, this is awesome, or even like, I think Batman's going to win. And it's very rewarding to me. And we're working on more stuff all the time that I can't really talk about yet. But uh, if you love the Who Would Win trailers, or if you want to check them out, like just follow them on Twitter, Facebook group. I, I'm very happy with them. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get back more back into your podcast. Yeah, yeah. Dial Up Movie Club. I love Dial the concept of it. It's pretty cool beans. <laughs> what is the favorite movie you've done so far? Who okay, I do I do keep a spreadsheet because we give scores at the end and we are looking for yes. the best of the best. So the number one movie right now is a movie that Dean suggested, uh, which you may have heard of. It's called The Lighthouse. No, nah, I'm not it. watching that shit. <laughs> 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 have you seen it? I've heard of it. I said, I don't have no interest in watching that movie. No, no, I completely understand. It's a very niche movie for no, a niche audience. Number but one luckily, should uh, be the Transformers, the movie, 1986, <laughs> animated. <laughs> that movie's great, but The Lighthouse has scenes that I cannot talk about on this show. <laughs> That's the one with um, I've, somebody, somebody described that movie to me. I'm like, that doesn't sound like anything I want to watch. No, no like I forgot who it's somebody is two people that's famous. It's yes, it's Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. That's what it is. Yes, yes, because they yes. were like, That's the movie where everybody said, Oh, this guy should be Batman. Yeah, I yep. say, What? Hi, <laughs> right, like, I'm cool on this one. <laughs> like, yeah, and like other movies are up there. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, that's our number two right now. And just my personal favorite is, oh, it's tough. Yeah, you did The Incredibles. Favorite. I love The Incredibles. That's Great a 10 movies. out of 10. Okay, I like that choice. Yeah. Uh, Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man we've done. Love okay. that movie. That's a great Batman movie. Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Fantastic movie. Love that movie. So, yeah, those are some of my favorites. And those episodes where we bring guests on, it's very unique because you get that new perspective in a movie. Usually they recommend movies that we've never thought about. <laughs> like one of my buddies came on, uh, he recommended us a movie called Your Name, which is an anime movie. And I've none of us of are very much into it. Do, have you seen that movie? I have not watched it. It's on my queue, but I have heard of that movie. Yes. Uh yeah, it's not something I would have ever watched like on my own. So having guests come on, that's great. And it, it, it wasn't our highest scored movie, but it's a great. I'm glad I watched it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So let me ask you. Let me ask this. Yeah, yeah. How did you guys even come up with the concept of this podcast? Okay. Um. Well, Dean and I used to work together at a auto shop, and. 
we and I, I really wanted to as I was getting more involved with the Who Would Win show, I really wanted to start my own thing and and just use it to elevate ourselves and other people. And I I didn't want <laughs> it sounds it sounds lazy, but I'm like I don't really want to put research into this too much like i just want to do something chill some people can just pop on they don't make sense yeah just some people can listen to and and we came up with the idea of dial up movie club and dial up is kind of our group name our we have dial up pictures on youtube which is where we put all our short films we work on together uh, and then, so of course, it kind of just evolved into a branch off of Dial Up Pictures. Now it's Dial Up Movie Club, and yeah, and so coming to and it gives us a chance to talk every week, which is always great. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes they can torture me with movies I don't want to watch, and so it is. <laughs> it is just a fun concept. And I said at the beginning, I said if if only one person listens and enjoys this, I will be happy to make it every week. And we hit like number fifty two in the charts last week. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um. So like, people are loving the show and people are enjoying it, and we're bringing on cool guests, and I'm very proud of it. So, yeah. Awesome. Final question before we go. Gotcha. Well, I want to ask you this because you mentioned it. Okay, go ahead. I think this, this matter of fact, I'm going to ask you this question because I think y'all got to have you back on to have a whole conversation about the about the movie that you make. I think that's a whole different conversation. Oh, awesome! That'd yeah. be really cool. That'd be super cool. I'd be down for that. Okay, awesome. So let me ask you about this. Okay, where do you want to take the Dialogue Movie Club podcast? How far do you want to go with it? What's your aspirations in terms of podcast? Because podcasting is becoming a big thing. Yes. I, I like the concept of Dialogue Movie Club. I like what you guys do. I like that you have on these different guests who bring a different perspective to movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Where do you want to see it go? Ooh, that it's tough. Like long term, of course. I'd love to do this the rest of my life if I could. But you think about it. I am not going into this as a podcaster. I'm going into this as a director and an editor. Those are kind of my two niche things in the film industry. So, and then of course the horrible pandemic that shall not be named kind of put a halt on all of that. So I I was creativity deprived for over a year. I couldn't get people together to shoot things. So I, I, it's a way for me to get my creative feelings out there and I think anyone that has an urge to create has a creative bone in their body just do it people like if you want to make a short film get some buddies together and make it you don't even need buddies <laughs> like, set your phone up on a desk and record you doing whatever just if you have a passion and the willpower to make something the talent's going to follow you. And so with the Dial Up Movie Club, what I want to do is I want this to be a way that even if I am on sets at, at uh, a future jobs or anything, this can still be a way that I can kind of relax, get thoughts out there, and hopefully inspire people to check out inspiring films and filmmakers. And uh, inspire, like I was talking to Dean when we first started this, our slogan is, we aspire to inspire. Like we want to raise other creators up with us. And if you like want to shoot me a DM or anything, people of like things you've made, I would love to watch it because I love creative people. Like I love this show. I love the guests you bring on. And that's why I love the Who Would Win show. I love all, all podcasts that people recommend to me. I awesome. <laughs> like there's not much stuff I hate because it's what you do for this show, Delvin, is you had a vision and you freaking did it, man. You made yeah. a podcast. <laughs> yeah, and people like it. And people like it. That's the miracle of it. You can make things and people <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah, it's dope. It's kind of dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and uh, I, I love that anyone can do that now in the age we live in, whether it whether you want to be a YouTuber or a podcaster or a filmmaker or anything. You want to make a makeup blog? I don't care. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) 
So yeah, definitely. I, I started to dial up movie club because I can. <laughs> yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Man, Matthew, thank you for coming on, brother. Let them know where to yeah. find you at. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Delvin. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hopper2400. And you can find the Dial Up Movie Club wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow that podcast on Twitter at Club Dial and our YouTube channel, Dial Up Pictures. So you can just find our weird videos we got up there right now. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you yes. for coming on, Matthew. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Delvin. It was a great time. Likewise. And as always, Delvin Cox Experience, we are out. Peace. Peace out.